I've come to see that Amtrak doesn't just carry us from one place to another. It opens up enormous possibilities. And especially now, it makes it possible to build an economy of the future and one that we need. Last week, I announced the target of cutting greenhouse gases and gas emissions in half by 2030. And most of that of those emissions in this, in this, in this country come from transportation. But if just 10 percent of the freight shipped and the largest trucks went by rail instead, we'd be removing 3,300,000 cars from the road. And we've been planting is the same as doing that, or planting 260 million trees in America. And as I've said from the beginning, when I think about fighting climate change, I think about jobs and rail, and hopefully the expansion of rail provides good union jobs, good paying jobs. It also connects people to jobs and economic opportunities that can be reached from wherever you live. Let's put this in perspective. For years, I fought efforts to cut funding for Amtrak, because cutting funding for Amtrak would be a disaster for our environment and our economy. Amtrak carries four times as many riders between Washington and New York City as every single airline does within 50 miles of the shore from Florida all the way up that coast. Imagine what we'd have to do a single day without the Northeast Carter, for example, with Amtrak and the Northeast Carter would cost the economy $100 million. If you shut down all passenger service on Amtrak's Northeast Carter, the projects that compensate for the loss, you'd have to add seven new lanes of highway on I-95. And consider that cost, average of $30 million for a linear mile on I-95. This is the bargain of bargains of bargains. It's economical and it's environmentally uh, a, a lifesaver. That's why in my rescue plan, American Rescue Plan, we worked hard to keep Amtrak running. At the height of the pandemic, because we weren't traveling Amtrak, furloughed 1,200 1, employees. And we were able to provide emergency relief to keep rail service running. And we've now brought back 1,200 union workers who had been furloughed. And by the way, you get a union wage, not 15 bucks an hour, a prevailing wage. But we have to do more than just build back. We have to build back better. And today, we have a once-in-a-generation opportunity to position Amtrak and rail, and inner city rail as well, in general, to play a central role in our transformation and transportation economic future, to make investments that can help America get back on track, no pun intended. Before the pandemic hit, Amtrak's ridership and revenues were on the upswing. The Northeast Carter has been making money for a long while now, but last year, the whole of Amtrak's system was projected to break even for the first time in history, but then we had the pandemic. But there is still a huge backlog in deferred maintenance, huge need to modernize our trains, our stations, our bridges, our tunnels. Well, we're, take, we're talking about critical jobs like the Hudson River Tunnel, the Baltimore Potomac Tunnels, and the Susquehanna River Bridge. In my American Jobs Plan, I propose spending $10 billion a year on passenger rail and freight rail. Of this, two-thirds would support existing Amtrak routes, including the Northeast Corridor, but nationwide. And we're talking about union jobs, as I said. And we talk, we're taking care of the riders, laying track, wiring switches, fixing bridges, tunnels, modernizing stations, and repairing and rebuilding this vital infrastructure. This would allow for a, the potential to expand passenger rail service. Imagine a two-hour train ride between Atlanta and Charlotte going at speeds of 220 miles an hour, and two-and-a-half-hour trip between Chicago and Detroit, or faster and more regular trips between Los Angeles and Las Vegas, a route that I imagine could be pretty popular on Fridays. Bill, as you've said, your vision for Amtrak calls for a new inner-city rail service, up to 160 previously unserved communities being connected. Think of what it will mean for opportunity if we can connect Milwaukee to Green Bay to Madison, Scranton and Allentown to New York, Indianapolis to Louisville, and much, much more. It's going to provide jobs. It will also accommodate jobs. 
And what this means is that towns and cities that have been in danger of being left out and left behind will be back in the game. It means families don't have to sacrifice the cost of living or quality of access to opportunity that sometimes only occurs if they live in a big city. We have a huge opportunity here to provide fast, safe, reliable, clean transportation in this country. And transit is part of the infrastructure. And like the rest of our infrastructure, we're way behind the rest of the world right now. We need to remember we're in competition with the rest of the world. People come here and set up businesses. People stay here. People grow because of the ability to access, access transportation, access all the infrastructure. It's what allows us to compete. And with the rest of the world, to win the 21st century, we've got to move. China already has 23,000 miles of high-speed rail, 220 miles per hour, two-thirds of all the high-speed rail in the, in, in the world, 220 miles an hour. And the way — and they're, and they're working on uh, transit on trains that can go as high as 400 miles an hour. We're behind the curve. But, folks, as I said the other night, America's on the move again.